All right, and uh, we're live, sort of, not really. But uh, anyways, this is the first episode of the Dev Docs podcast. It's a working title. Came up with it 25 seconds ago. Uh, today I have Will Parr joining me uh, out of Omaha, Nebraska. Is that right? Yep, Omaha. Sweet. Cool, man. Uh, well, first, uh, for those people who don't know you, um, I've been talking to you for a while now on Instagram. So uh, why don't you go ahead and like tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do? Yeah, so obviously, name's Will Parr. But, um, so I went to college at like Iowa State University. Um, then I initially started as an industrial engineer and then started like doing apps on the side. So then I switched to software engineering and then... Uh, yeah, just kind of stuck with it. Got a job out of college, and then yeah, stuck with it ever since. So, been good. Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, that's kind of interesting. You come from an industrial engineering background. Uh, I have a fairly like far outside of coding background myself. Um, I don't know if you know, like from my Instagram, uh, I spent a lot, like quite a while in the military, um, and then after that, I kind of fell into like. Uh, not so much chemical engineering, but like the chemical industry. And uh, I did that for a couple of years before um, I was, I was learning code that whole time, but it was actually like a couple of years before I landed a job in that field. So like, I also come from, you know, a different type of engineering background. And then when I was in the military, it was more um, like gas turbine mechanic type stuff. So it was more like on the mechanical side. So I've done like every engineering except like coding professionally. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was, say, I was like, dang, I was like, what haven't you done? Yeah, so, it, you know, I've kind of been around, um, but uh, if I recall, um, we've been on one of Justin's uh, live streams together, Justin Chow, and I think you, you said you've been coding for quite a while, is that right? Yeah, so, Paris said six years, so, like, I count technically, you know, four years of college, like, it's experience, honestly, and then, yeah, about, like, a year and a half now after like professionally and then if, i guess you count the internship and that's like you know another six months so two years i guess professionally but yeah so i've been coding for a while um didn't do it in high school like a lot of people i know so i was always kind of different at LA. and then waited two years like into college and then i was like all right i'm gonna you know go ahead and switch majors just out of nowhere so yeah so i still had all that experience though so yeah yeah, definitely. This is really one of those things where, like, any experience you can get is, like, the most valuable thing. And did you, so you majored in computer science, or? Yeah, so, like, we offer, like, different types of uh, majors for computer science. So we have computer science, and then we have software engineering, computer engineering, electrical engineering, cybersecurity. There's one more that I'm missing. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, we offer, like, <laughs> very specific, like, subdivisions of the computer science umbrella, basically. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, I, uh, my my degree is actually in uh, information technology, and, like, okay. I, I had a concentration in programming, and it was terrible. Like, I didn't learn any coding from that degree program. Like, that, that's why maybe partially, like, my view of the value of college is kind of skewed. Uh, because I have a degree and I've never used it for anything. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do think there is, like, value in it. Um, in my case, the value comes from, like, getting past application filters on job applications, you know, because those ATS systems will screen you out on certain jobs. So it's kind of nice to have it to get past that. But I think as far as coding, at least in my own opinion, I don't think that you have to have it to do this professionally. Um, like by any means like what's kind of like your take on college and becoming a developer yeah i mean i, I definitely don't think that you need uh like a degree anymore um but i guess it also depends kind of on what you want to do with it um because i'd say you know if you want to be like a principal engineer like one of the top engineers at like a bigger company or um i don't know just getting into more very specific domains like maybe you're really good at like notification engines and like stuff like that on the back end, then I think that you'll have to have at least some structured education um, for sure. I mean, like there are always, of course, the few exceptions that are like, yeah, I've been coding since I was seven, taught myself how to do it. And, you know, then they're just like a magician. And, like we're, we're going to exclude those people from this conversation. But I think, you know, for the majority of like front end, um, like 
more web development type stuff, I don't think that you necessarily need a degree anymore. I think that having a degree definitely gets your foot in the door for sure. Because, you know, on those like, like we were just talking about, how you get screened out. And I mean, yes, you can uh, like rag on college and stuff, but at the same time, it does show that you at least spent, you know, four years working towards something. You were dedicated to doing that. And like, you know, you got your diploma. So, I mean, there's also some merit to it. And I think that what you put into college is also what you're going to get out. Because I know several people that, you know, I mean, I went to a pretty decent college and like they, you know, were in the major with me and graduated, but then they just didn't put a lot into their major and they didn't, you know, do the side projects or they didn't talk with people outside and make those connections. And so now they're just, you know, I think one guy's still looking for a job. So it's just, yeah, it, it kind of depends, you know, just on the individual as well. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's the same way with like a lot of programs it is, uh, you know, you get out of it, what you put into it. And I've definitely seen that same experience, uh, uh, out of like coding boot camps. Um, Myself, like I'm a Hack Reactor graduate. Uh, I graduated mm -hmm. from Hack Reactor in September earlier this year, um, and then I I was very fortunate. Uh, I managed to find a job 30 days after. I had uh, quite an advantage though in the sense that um, I don't know. I can't say for sure that my degree played into it, uh, getting past any filters or anything, because I can't prove that. Uh, right. But I, I did have a lot of time self-teaching before I went through that program, which uh, a lot of the people that I was in that course with uh, had started, you know, three months prior to like the program right. starting. And, uh, and, and that, you know, that, that's uh, really subjective, like as far as like how good you actually are, because like, for example, like one of the guys that was in my cohort he got a way better job than I did out of that program. Like he's making like twice as much money as I am. <laughs> and, and he, and, you know, he didn't have like, you know, the like two or three years of like learning by, by yourself or whatever before I did, but he was way better at data structures and algorithms than I was. Um, you know, his, he could just wrap his mind around it a lot better than I could. Cause those are really complex topics. Like to this day, sure. like I would, st <laughs> I still struggle to build a linked list. Like, it's it's hard you know right uh, yeah i get that for sure and yeah like you said like you know with that boot camp and this guy like got this really good job offer and i assume that there are other people who also didn't get job offers or maybe quit the programs and stuff like that yeah i think you know it kind of mirrors college in that way it's where just whatever you put into it how hard you work and like the skills that you learn while you're there yeah it's kind of sets you up for how you're going to be in the future i think for sure but yeah, I hate algorithms. <laughs> oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. Say that too. For sure. Yeah, and it's definitely true. There are, you know, there are people that I know that um, took either contractor roles. Uh, I know, like at least one person took an internship coming out of that program, and then I know several that are still looking for work as well. Granted, this was, you know, just a couple months ago, um, okay. but obviously, no program guarantees you a job. Uh, I think that it's just a matter of like how well they prepare you to take that step. And then there's a lot of hustle and twice as much luck involved in getting your foot in the door. Like that first job is all luck, <laughs> like a hundred percent. For sure. And yeah, cause that's one of the things that I was really grateful for with like college is we were, it was not required, but highly and strongly recommended that we do an internship. So that when we would come out of college, we would have professional experience already in like at an enterprise level. So we could say, yeah, I've already worked on the enterprise applications. I've worked with, you know, team members, stuff like that. Like it's proven that I've done this so I can work with other people. So when you graduate, you're like, oh, well, he has an internship, check. Came from a college, check. It's like that just gets your foot in the door just really easily, honestly. And that's something that I'm extremely grateful for when it came to, you know, graduating with my degree and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that's one of the advantages that you do get with college, like at least in a, in most cases, like when you're younger, because you have that that opportunity and time to go through uh, like an internship, for example. Um, or if you're like one of those even luckier people who go through an internship at like Facebook and you make seven thousand dollars a month, like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but you know, in, in my own like situation, like I. I was going through college like online in my mid twenties because I spent seven years in the military and like I got out and I had, you know, 
financial responsibilities and a family and things like that. And like, I can't take an unpaid internship. <laughs> like I was, I was in like no position to do something like that. Yeah. And that, that's the one thing is like going back to college, I think is like, I admire it. You know, it's extremely hard to do. I just, yeah, I don't think I could ever do that myself. And so going through college, right. You know, straight out of high school was just my option. I was like, all right, let's, let's do this. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. For it. So, <laughs> That, so that definitely helped though. There's a lot of age at play as well. Oh, so definitely. And dedicate to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we kind of talked about like college and boot camps. Uh, what's your take on like the third option, the you know the self-taught developer? That's a uh, yeah, it's controversial, right? Because you know you have that have these people who are like they're extremely skilled at what they do, right? Like, you have those people that are just, like, they were coding from the age of eight or whatever. They did robotics. You know, they were, like, really good. And then, like, out of high school, they probably knew what I knew, like, graduating <laughs> college. And so, I mean, you know, there are those cases where it's just, like, they're just on a whole nother level. And so that's, that's we're just going to, you know, again, exclude those types of people because I think that my opinion on it is that would I tell anyone to just, try self-taught i don't think so because like if you have the opportunity to do a boot camp if you have the opportunity to go to college then i would say take that like it's a highly structured program if you work hard at it then i mean coming out of it you should have a job or you should at least have the knowledge and connections to eventually get a job and so i think that's just really hard for me personally to suggest someone else to do self-taught programming it's that there's no structure and for the majority of people, I mean, like, how many people do you know wake up every day and work out? Like, for for instance, you know? Right. So right. I think that's just kind of that thing. And it's like, it, you know, a structured program, it's really going to help you. But I'm not going to bash on self-taught either because, you know, there are great developers that are self-taught. And I know a couple that are actually self-taught. And it's just it's very subjective. So, but, yeah, I wouldn't give that advice to anyone to be self-taught. Um, but, yeah, like... If, if you're already good, then you're already good. And I feel like you kind of know at that point as well. So. Yeah, there are definitely there are definitely people that pick it up like way quicker than others. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know if like prodigy is the right word for that kind of situation because like there's still right. so much to learn. Like you just may pick it up quicker. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a very like interesting, controversial topic. And um, I definitely can't hate on self-taught developers. Uh, I no, I yeah. tried to go that route myself, and it's incredibly hard. Um, there are definitely people who have become successful developers from taking that route. Uh, a lot of them are YouTubers, um, mm -hmm. some very big ones. And you know, I've seen self-taught developers that got, have gotten jobs anywhere from like three to nine months after starting, but. The, the issue that comes in, I think, is uh, uh, there's there's no true, like, roadmap. And, and that's the same with, like, any, right. any route you take. So, like, it's really easy to miss certain types of information or not really know, like, the proper route to take and, like, what you should learn in what order. Um, it's, really, it's really hard to, like, figure out because everybody tells you something different. And it's, exactly. so, it's so opinionated, you know? Um, but yeah, there's definitely people that have gotten jobs out of that like super quick. And, you know, I dabbled in code starting from like 2017 up until uh, like 2019. And I jumped around a lot of different languages trying to figure out what I liked. And then I probably spent a year, year and a half like solely on web development. Uh, you know, when I like decided like, hey, this is, you know, what I'm like really interested in. So this is what I want to do. And then uh, I kind of went from you know, there and then, you know, life happened. And then I ended up in Hack Reactor uh, that really helped accelerate my, my knowledge. Like I kind of, like I thought I knew a lot and then I went to Hack Reactor and I was like, dude, like, I don't know anything. Like <laughs> I was, I was struggling just as hard as like other people in the program that had started like three months before, you know, there were some things like I may have picked up on a little quicker just because like, I, I was like, you know, oh, like I've kind of seen this before. Or I briefly used this technology before, but it like it doesn't mean by any means it was easy. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, I mean yeah, that's that's probably how I'd say you know self-taught is like if I see like a self-taught developer, like 
by no means want to hate on them or anything like that. Like if, if they're like a coworker, then obviously they have at least the same skills as me. So, you know, they almost deserve, they almost deserve like more respect because they put in so much hustle to like get where they're at. <laughs> right. And, it's, and so, yeah, that's the thing is like, I had this literally like a flow chart of the classes I'm supposed to take. Exactly. Just like set me up. But like the self-taught is just, you know, you make your own road. And I yeah. Like, I need someone else to tell me what road to go down. So yeah, yeah. that's just, that's how I view it. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy hard. Um, and then, you know, once you, once you leave that structure, uh, it can be kind of hard to, to like find the urge to keep pushing further sometimes because you're so used to that structure and then suddenly you don't have it. Um, like, yeah, for sure. like, what, like what's something that like you, you know, like your go-to for like motivation now that you don't have that structure in your life and you're trying to continue growing as a developer. And as a content yeah. creator, because, you know, you have YouTube and Instagram now, too. And I, I will, you know, I'll link your channels down below the video as well. So. Sweet. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I mean, like, when it comes to, I guess, motivation, it's just, um, I guess that's always something that I've had, like, internally. Uh, because, you know, when I was younger, like, I played competitive sports all the time. And so that's what I was really into. And I always wanted to be better. I always wanted to be the best. And so then going into college was just different because I had struggled like I struggled during college and like I remember my GPA at one point was like a 1.92 and so like <laughs> it was trash <laughs> but like once I got out and once I interned with a company I think that was when I really decided oh this is like definitely what I'm good at like I'm good at what I do because when I was interning there they I was me and one other intern and you know they were talking about it they're like yeah like you're on par with like some of our other developers like as an <laughs> intern. And so it's just like awesome to hear that because I was struggling in school with the whole education side. And I think that's what a lot of people kind of struggle with as well is they weren't necessarily good at school or they weren't necessarily good at college, but by no means does that mean how you're going to be in the field. So and just that motivation of me always wanting to be better now that like I'm out of college and like I see like other people and like what they do and like, man, I want to build something like that or I want to be a part of something like that. So I think just kind of following other people that have similar interests to me um, is definitely something that I do just to kind of like, well, they're doing this. Like I should definitely do something like that. And it's not like I need to hustle all the time, but it's just, you know, it's motivational for sure. Yeah, I think so too. And like, like you said, like, uh, you know, it's not like you need to hustle all the time, but like, you kind of have to find that balance, right? <laughs> yeah, because um, you burn out so fast. <laughs> yeah, but it's also super easy to, like, when you're trying to, like, pick up a new topic or something and, like, like you, you, you suddenly, like, you do something really cool in it that, like, you hadn't done before, it's real easy to get, like, sucked into it. And, you know, exactly. next thing you know, like, six <laughs> hours has gone by. <laughs> right, because I was experimenting with a, uh, the React uh, drag and drop uh like library that's out there and it's like i don't know who developed it because i didn't one, use that one uh, who made it because there's one made by wix but actually that may be it where it's react beautiful drag and drop i don't know what it is but it's like i was like oh okay this is kind of cool and then i like kept working on it and then like i looked at the clock and it was like three hours had gone by and I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> but it's just like you know when you're learning like i love learning and so just like man, I'm learning so much right now. This is so cool. And then I never like stop and check the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, no, I got to cook dinner, got to do all this. So yeah, yeah, I'm totally guilty of that as well, all the time. And uh, uh, you know, I I mean, like you kind of talked a bit about like your college GPA and everything, and that that really says a lot to like I think people who are like trying to become developers that think you have to be like some kind of you know crazy super genius to do this kind of stuff. Exactly. Uh, and. It really like I think that school is kind of weird in the way that like you tend to struggle more in subjects you're not interested in, uh, or that like aren't being applied in the way that like like you know is something that you you really care about. Because uh, I I struggled a lot in high school. Um, I graduated high school with a really bad GPA as well, fairly similar to your college GPA. And you know I at the time I was like I was really fed up with school. I hated like learning and everything, and it was and you know I didn't want to do college. Like it was part of the reason why I ended up in the military. And then I got in the military and was forced to learn a whole bunch of super complex stuff. So, <laughs> uh, 
and then all over again. yeah pretty much right and then you know like so i i kind of adopted like this learning style from that in a sense and then you know later on like i found coding and i was like hey this is something i'm like really interested in and i over time like kind of grew to love learning more about it and how to like solve these problems and stuff like i never really like understood that problem solving was a skill that you could like get better at <laughs> I thought you were either just like good or bad at it. <laughs> For sure, I feel that. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, like there, there's really so much to it, and like, you you don't have to be like some kind of super super genius or anything like that. I think it really just comes down to like, like, can you commit long enough to succeed? Uh, I think if anybody exactly. does this long enough, they they can do it for sure, like professionally. Um, I think it's more of like, I think the biggest reason that people fail at becoming developers is because they give up too soon, because it's harder than they thought. And people mm -hmm. don't really like to do hard things, not very often at least. Right. And that's that, you know, that dedication, like when you hit that first wall, like it's hard. And, and that's why, like, you know, my opinion was like, you know, go to a well-structured boot camp, go to a well-structured college type plan is because there's so many resources and they're all like, you know, they have PhDs, so of course they're going to be able to help you. And so just like when you're self-taught, it's just like you hit that first wall and you're like, this is really difficult. Who do I even reach out to type of thing? And so I think that's, that's really tough. It's just not having all those resources that you would get with going through a program or something. So Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think that, uh, so obviously like some self-taught people that are super early in their their phases of learning or probably don't know about this but like the developer community is pretty incredible like there's tons of people out there that are so willing to help like if you reach out and like just ask questions or something or there's like reddit there's so many resources and places to uh you know just like ask questions and like get help like i i get people that message me all the time on instagram and like i I pretty much always respond to people unless they're like, hey, like I have this idea. Do you want to build an app for me? Which it turns yeah. out, which it turns out is fairly regular that people send me those messages. And sometimes I don't reply to them. And sometimes I tell them like, like I'm not a freelancer. And they're mm -hmm. like, okay, but like, it's going to be the next Facebook. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, right. It's not. I promise. <laughs> unless you, unless you have a billion dollars, like, you know, like i'm not interested <laughs> exactly yeah because when those people are like oh i have like an app or whatever that i'm gonna like build and i'm like they're like can you help and i was like okay well what's your business plan like just straight up and i'm like how much you know what's your like equity for like you know developers because obviously you're you know this is an idea so how are you gonna pay them and i think if i just have that free base message <laughs> and i just hit paste send it back and they oh, never respond. <laughs> yeah. Or what's a business plan? Yeah. It's it's crazy. I'm just like, that shuts them up. But like, I still keep the door open just in case that one dude is like, hey, really love your work. Like, I have a business plan and everything like that. Then it's, you know. Yeah. But I kind of get the idea that in, in my head, I'm like, if they're serious about this, though, like, he wouldn't be reaching out to like random developers on Instagram. Like, yeah. They would they would be like looking through legitimate resources, like trying to hire people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably like AngelList or something. Yeah, I think AngelList is one of the biggest ones for like startups uh, or like super small companies. Uh, mm -hmm. There was one place I applied to before. I, actually, I don't think it was through AngelList. Actually, I think it was through like LinkedIn, but uh, it was some like ed tech startup. I actually forgot their name. It might've been like ed link or something like that. And if it was, then you guys got a free shout out to the four people that'll listen to this. But, um, yeah, they, they literally were like hiring a software engineer and they had one guy who built their platform. They had like four employees, <laughs> like they were like new, new, but like they seemed legitimate though, because they had like four employees and one of them was like a, what, a very senior engineer who had built their platform because they already had a product and they had like 700 schools like in their customer base already. Like they were they, like they were like about to rocket ship. Yeah. And I was like, dude, there's no way these people are going to hire me. <laughs> like, like they need a fourth guy. They need somebody who's like, like very senior. <laughs> but like they were willing to interview me, though. Uh, I think I actually ended up 
turning down their interview after because I think I accepted my position before uh, you know the interview date. But just the mm-hmm. the idea that they were like open to interview me was kind of crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, yeah, when they're like only have four people and stuff like that, that's you know those are the cool stages of a startup for sure. Yeah, because wow. everything you do has like so much impact uh Mm -hmm. versus like you know if you're at google like you'll probably never even change the color of a button (laughs) (laughs) but they'll but they'll pay you a lot more money to do it (laughs) exactly yeah i get that yeah it's it's kind of the love hate thing with like big and small companies is like uh it's like do you want to have a bigger impact or do you want to make more money (laughs) exactly because yeah there's definitely two sides to that i think as well because like you know work somewhere like uber airbnb you know one of those big tech companies you have that on your resume for the rest of your life <laughs> you know that's that's a, you know front the door yeah. anywhere you want to go yeah i think you're pretty yeah. set after that yeah for sure and so like you have something like that and they're like oh well this guy worked it blah 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 blah. he's gonna be awesome and there's the other side of that it's like this guy worked a small company but this is what he did at that small company and these are the impacts he made and so there's just two sides of it. So it's like the name brand versus, you know, really looking at the meat of what they did as well. So. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I think that there's definitely like, there's there's still some pretty like, you know, small to like mid-tier companies that are pretty well known though. They may not give you the same kind of reputation as like a fan company, but I think that, you know, right. like if you work at somewhere that's like pretty widely known, I think that it's it still gives you some kind of credibility. For sure. Yeah. A name brand, it can it can really get you going <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, because the you know the first job is like really a big stepping stone to the rest of your career. So if you can definitely get in somewhere, uh, you know, with like like you said, name brand, like to start with, I think that your your path going forward is pretty bright. <laughs> as long as you don't like yeah. do anything really dumb. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, I have friends that. I worked with and uh, like actually on senior design stuff Um, because in your senior year, like for college, we had to, it was a year long class. And what we did was create a project like the entire way. And so it was just to be able to show people that, you know, if they hadn't had an internship or something like that, this is the project that we made with other developers and like, you know, students there. So it was like really cool. And then I was working on the same uh, team and like this guy like went to Amazon, this guy went to like Microsoft and I was like, okay I was like, <laughs> i'd see you i was like so for the rest of their lives they're like set i mean you have those names on your company like or on your resume then you're gonna go wherever you want after that yeah like, well, i'm jealous <laughs> and it, it's crazy too because like they'll get in at those companies and they'll still only stay like two years and they'll just hop to another mm-hmm. one it's like it's so common in this industry to like change jobs that people don't even like bat an eye at it it's just normal yeah for sure I think it also kind of, it's, I don't know if it's a signal, but just kind of like it's a symbol of how fast tech changes as well. Because like, you know, your company may be EHP shop all the way through and like, you know, doing all this stuff. And then now like this product starting to be deprecated, they're not going to be using that. And now they're changing it to be like, we're going to be modernizing our product and so we're going to be switching to these languages and you know a bunch of developers are going to jump ship because they're like i don't know how to do these technologies yeah like, you know so the performance is going to be low and they're, they just you know maybe not like working on those languages so they leave and so i think it just kind of is also a symbol of how fast you know tech changes as well just in this industry it's insane oh yeah it definitely is yeah there's so much uh like change that's so rapid and like like that's why um, I, I've heard this a lot actually, and it's like don't focus on like learning syntax and languages. Learn like the fundamentals of programming and just like how things work because the syntax is always going to change, but those are fairly concrete. Um, Preach. Like there's no there's no like best language or best framework. They can all do everything pretty much. It's just like a matter of preference or sometimes there might be like a slight benefit, but you know it's not like a deal breaker most of the time. Yeah, and I think, you know, like, and that's my strongest recommendation. That's that's why I have such a hard time when people are really getting into web development. They're like, I'm going to do JavaScript, I'm going to do React, and I'm going to do, and that's like what I'm good at. So and I love <laughs> React. Like, don't get me wrong. It's great. But it's just like, yeah, it's it's amazing. <laughs> like, But the thing is, is you know those, you know that framework. 
you know that language and it's, you don't really understand the fundamentals of why react is so great you don't understand the fundamentals of like why we use javascript on the front end and so just well of course like other than the fact that like you know there's no really other technologies like that. <laughs> that's the only option <laughs> yeah web assembly is kind of coming out now but like yeah and so it's just you really want to focus on those fundamentals because yeah, it's gonna bite you in the butt like later on. Otherwise, if you don't really practice and understand what you're doing, yeah, it's gonna lead you nowhere. So that's what I really struggle with. It's like when I see people jump into it and they're like, you're gonna learn these frameworks. I'm like, you gotta learn the fundamentals first. It's like, it's so, so important for sure. Yeah, it definitely but, is. I really agree with that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And like, you know, it, and it, it's still like, even then, like, you know, like, okay, like I need to focus on like fundamentals and stuff, but it's still hard to like find the right path. Uh, because especially like, like, cause people, people like don't, I don't, I don't think realize like, even when you're actually like a working developer, like it's still not a clear path. <laughs> like there's no. still like, there, <laughs> there's just, know. there's just more endless information. Cause it, this is definitely one of those things where it's like, the more, you know, the less, you know, <laughs> Mm -hmm. for sure and it, 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 that's why i'm like you're like well how do you learn and i'm like well i usually just read the documentation They're like how do you do that and i'm like well i was like you know i watched a few youtube videos and of course and i've like taken a course or two but like really understanding those fundamentals is how i'm able to do that now and just like reading like oh well that's just really this pattern like that's all it is <laughs> and so once i know that it's just yeah it's so much easier in the future for sure yeah, that's one of those things I have a hard time memorizing is like patterns uh, mm -hmm. or like, you know, like the, the patterns for like algorithms to like solve, you know, different toy problems and stuff. Like I, I don't normally like rem I don't remember them or like what they're called. Like I can just kind of like sort of find my way towards the answer, but I couldn't tell you probably like the name of the pattern that I used. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I totally get that because and that's why, you know, interviews some. Um, it's, it's hard to judge someone on an interview, like for software, I think for sure, because you want to know that they know stuff, but at the same time, it's like, all right, am I really going to be balancing binary trees, you know, every day? Is right. that what you guys do? If so, then maybe this isn't the job for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, that does not fun. sound like fun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, finding that balance, I think, it, it's definitely hard to, because you have, you know, self-taught, you have boot camp, you have, you know, college graduates, and like a self-taught easily you know way more than like a college graduate, you know, and everyone. So it's just hard to, how do you grade someone? Yeah, you know, it's, interview, I think, hard. yeah, it's, and I think that's why so many companies do it on a different merit, uh, because it, there's real, there's no real right answer in a way to judge somebody's ability to write software or code. Like it, mm -hmm. it's very hard to, to judge somebody's capability because even when it comes to toy problems, like there could be a guy who's definitely a better coder than someone else, but the other guy has just seen the toy problem before. Right. And that, that happens all the time. That's how people get into fan companies all the time. <laughs> yeah. Cause in those algorithms, I mean, it's just how often do you really do them on a daily basis? Like probably not yeah, very. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure there's like, I'm sure that, you know, they use graphs and I'm sure that there's like traversals and stuff like that that they have to do. But just on a daily basis, like, I feel like just interviewing for, you know, the team that you're going to be working on. Like, if you're going to be working on the mobile team, then they should be asking questions about mobile, not algorithms. But Right. Make it know, more... Amazon and Google didn't ask me how to interview people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it should definitely be, like, more about what the actual job you're applying for entails versus, like, some kind of generic, like can you figure out the puzzle like quicker and more efficiently than somebody else type of thing, but it has nothing to do with what you're going to do on a daily basis. Exactly. So I feel that. yeah, I think that, I think that the, the interview system for developers has a lot of room to grow. Um, I think that, you know, depending on who you ask, some people say that I think it's growing away from the whiteboarding problems. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that also depends on like what area you live in, because like, like where I live at, like, all the interviews that I did uh, uh, before I found a job, I, I, I didn't have any whiteboarding interviews. It was all technical questions, uh, which I consider myself very lucky for. But a lot of the, the people that I graduated from Hack Reactor with, um, they, they live you know, somewhere else. They live in the Colorado area. Uh, and, you know, like most of them had nothing but interviews that had whiteboarding questions. 
So I think a lot of it does come down to like where you live too and how companies tend to operate in that area. Yeah, for sure. And I, yeah, just deciding how, like how you want to interview people, I think it's just an interesting process. Cause like, I totally get like, you know, having a graph and like doing like binary tree balancer and like stuff like this, like cool. And it's like, yeah, these are really good problem solvers. And if they can figure that out, then, you know, you probably throw them at something else and they'll be able to figure it out too. It's just, yeah, like, you may have this very specific guy who's like really good at like, I don't know, mobile development. And how often are you going to use, you know, binary trees in mobile development? I couldn't, like, I, I couldn't tell you. Day, but like, yeah. And so it's just that, I don't know. I feel like there's, you know, you miss out on candidates as well, but I guess that's the hit that you take. Um, just like in that for sure. It's just, yeah. Like, we'd rather have a lot of good quality, you know, people that can do this versus, and we might miss out on that one guy compared to hiring a bunch of bad people. And, you know, yeah, no, I definitely, yeah, I definitely get it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing, though, is like there's so many good people coming in all the time to, you know, certain companies that like they don't really care that they miss out on people because there's always somebody else. And it's really just a numbers game at some point. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you ask, like, who doesn't want to work at Google, Facebook, like Twitter, like, <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to work. There. Like who, who wants to, yeah, who wants to, you know, push minimal code and make $200,000 a year? Probably, probably nobody, right? <laughs> Right. Um, but anyways, we're like actually way over 30 minutes. I thought this was only going to take 30 minutes. So, um, yeah, you know, like, I think that, you know, this was, this was a lot of fun though, dude, like for real. Um, yeah, for sure. yeah I think, I think it was a good conversation. So, but definitely dude, thanks for, you know, coming, coming on today and, uh, talking, talking about dev stuff, you know? Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, dude. This is, you know, this is the first episode. This one's going to live forever. Or at least as long as my YouTube channel does. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll put your uh, social links uh, in the description below or something. Uh, you guys be sure to check out Will on uh, his YouTube channel and his Instagram. He's got some really great content. Uh, hopefully, there will be a second episode of this, but we'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Will. I'll catch you later, man. All right. Sounds good. See ya.